Hello good people, today let's talk about why 4K gaming is dying or already dead, a trend that's been amplified by the rising prices of GPUs and monitors and continued scaling issues in Windows, yet we are constantly bombarded with this like 4K marketing material letting us know it's this like luxurious and hassle-free experience. It is not. Let's discuss right after this. The new Masterkeys MK750 keyboard comes with a comfortable magnetic wrist rest, beautiful RGB light bar on the perimeter and perky lighting control with a variety of Cherry MX switches and a bottom Type-C connection. Cooler Master doing it right. Check it out below. All right, so before getting into the 4K gaming discussion, let's talk about some of the negatives that you'll encounter outside of gaming. So weirdly, Windows scaling still does not properly support 4K resolution, like opening the NVIDIA control panel and the font doesn't follow my scaling properties, which I've set to 125%. Why? Opening native computer management tab gives us slightly blurry text. Why? I am happy to say though that Adobe finally fixed scaling issues with Photoshop and Lightroom in Windows, so 4K resolution for those applications now makes total sense. The next relevant thing to discuss would be monitor size. So I've got to experience uh, something very unique, which was the 43 inch panel from LG, and it was truly something to game on, but for that, you need more distance between the panel, otherwise it's just way too close to your face for this regular on-desk use, which is why most common 4K displays range in 27 inches to 28 inches, which is that perfect desktop size for the monitor, but the main benefit of the 4K resolution is kind of diminished because, you know, the 4K uh, scaling is best at 32 inches and above. Because at 100% scaling on my 27 inch panel, uh, I cannot see anything at an arm's length distance. That's ridiculous. So I have to scale everything into 150%, which is the recommended space, which gives me the exact same real estate as you would find on a 1440p display at the 27 inches as well. So what are you gaining here? Slightly more pixel density and slightly more clearer text, but you can only notice it if you're like really pixel peeping it close. So the one benefit at 27 inches uh, with 4K display would be scaling at 125%. So you get slightly smaller text, uh, but it's not like super tiny. And for me, it is more comfortable and you get a little bit additional real estate than what you would find on a 1440p panel. And finally, let's talk about 4K gaming. So my first 4K playthrough was with Titanfall 2. It's because I actually received the monitor right around when the game came out and decided to give it a try to see what the experience would be like. And yes, it was absolutely gorgeous. And seeing the sharpness and the detail, uh, something that was out of my monitor was just incredible to me. But I had this like internal conflict because I'm coming from a much higher refresh rate display, 144 hertz in particular, to 60 hertz. And that's where I kind of felt that this resolution uh, detail is there, but I really missed the whole fluidity aspect. And so I think that is what plagues that entire 4K category. Even with my GTX 1080 and the Ryzen 1700X at 3.8 gigahertz and 32 gigabytes of RAM, I still had to lower in-game resolution to achieve my optimal frame rates. Because remember, 4K is 8.3 million pixels and your graphics card has to drive those pixels, not just, you know, give you a, just an image on display, but has to constantly rework them. And that requires a lot of GPU power. And for reference, 1440p is only 3.7 million pixels, and that is 44% of 4K, and 1080p is only 2 million pixels, which is 25% of 4K. So yes, you would need an extremely powerful GPU and an overall system to deliver playable frame rates at 4K, which is why over 70% of users are still on 1080p resolutions, 1440p follows with only 3.5%, and less than 1% uh, use 4K displays as their primary based on the Steam survey. And add to this, 10 of the most common GPUs in this hardware survey are not even capable of 4K gaming. Maybe the GTX 1070 at low to medium settings. And GPUs that are capable of running 4K resolutions with good frame rates are super expensive. The 1080, the 1080 Ti, the Titan series, the AMD stuff is just outrageously expensive right now, all thanks to mining, which is a big deterrent of going towards the 4K like gaming system, trying to build something that is capable to run something playable at that resolution. Resolution, uh, but luckily, 
uh, the mid-tier cards like the GTX 1060 have not been massively affected by increase in prices, which is why the market has seen like this really big uptake in those mid-tier car cards because 4K is no longer priority. It's kind of like unachievable and unattainable, but what is attainable is all that 1080p goodness and running really good frame rates at that resolution and above up to 1440p. And here where I think the good frame rate conversation kind of splits the user base based on their own user experience. So for me, I like 100 plus FPS because that gives me the most fluid experience. I feel like my, my aim is one-to-one -one with the monitor and the mouse. And I'm willing to take a hit on the resolution and even game settings for graphics in order to achieve the smoothest possible frame rate without you know completely diminishing the graphics fidelity and like not just looking at weird pixels on the screen. With 4K, it's very difficult, even at lower settings, to achieve desired frame rates like 100 plus. Good luck, my friend. But even if I had some performance wiggle room, I would prioritize on in-game graphics settings first, make sure the game looks, looks prettier than resolution. And also remember for lower resolution monitors, let's say 1080p and 1440p, we have uh, super sampling. And, and both NVIDIA and AMD have their own versions with DSR and VSR that allows you to basically have this like 4K image that would be super sampled into your 1080p or 1440p display so you get sharper images and uh, without needing a larger uh, resolution display. But of course, it's still as power hungry on your GPU and your hardware as you would run it on like a native 4K display. But coming back to that primary limiting factor of refresh rate at 60 Hertz, you know, why would you want to play 4K 60 Hertz with anything competitive or FPS? You know, CSGO, Dota 2, Overwatch, Battlefield 1, PUBG, all those games require your attention and like the fluidity of the environment so you can win you know, you're not there to like basically enjoy the, the gaming environment. So 4K at 60 uh, with any of those games doesn't really make sense. And even with more beautiful games like Assassin's Creed Origins, you would get a better visual experience by bumping up your graphics settings first before bumping up the resolution. But for strategy games, I get it. For something slower paced, 60 Hertz is not an issue and 4K would deliver that beautiful detail that you can expect. Um, so it would really complement games like Civilization, Warhammer, Company of Heroes, etc. And my recommendation for gamers is to invest into high refresh rate monitors, FreeSync, G-Sync, IPS, all those things that combine into like a really good solid experience both in gaming and productivity on the 1080p and 1440p side before jumping into 4K. And price-wise, you're actually at a major advantage uh, having all these extra features and a slightly lower price point than you would can expect from a similar 4K uh, priced pan at 60 Hertz from the same brand. And we also cannot ignore the rise of popularity for ultra wide gaming monitors that deliver such a more unique experience than traditional 4K. And they, they have that like perfect middle ground between traditional 1440p and 4K monitors. And if you decide to go with a non IPS 1440p panel, they are much cheaper and yet still deliver a pretty decent gaming experience at high refresh rates. And now let's have this hypothetical where price is not a barrier to entry, we still have this massive roadblock of actually accessing the panels because manufacturers are not producing 4K high refresh rate monitors. And we've seen Asus and Acer tease us with their 4K 144 Hertz displays with HDR and all types of other goodness, but they've been delayed until unknown time in 2018. And we are far from a point where 4K gaming makes sense because 1080p still dominates. You know, ultra wides are becoming more abundant and 1440p at 144 Hertz uh, just makes more sense for productivity and gaming than 4K at 60. Now there is one exciting development in 4K PC gaming and that is the appearance of a 65 inch 120 Hertz monitor. We saw them at CES and they look fantastic and the gaming experience is awesome too because they're HDR ready and like all types of bells and whistles in there too. And so on that scale, 4K totally makes sense. The gaming experience is fantastic fantastic, but with the demand being so low, uh, you are basically soaking up the early adoption cost. And so the buyer pays that extra premium because you are one of the first. The new Corsair Void Pro gaming headset is comfortable, stylish in different colors, delivers fantastic wireless performance, even for competitive gaming with an all new microphone for clear communications. Check out the Void Pro Wireless or Wired in the description below.
And to conclude, I think 4K PC gaming is not dying because it never actually was part of the vast majority of gamers, despite being constantly bombarded from all sides about this whole notion of 4K gaming is better. And the insane GPU prices will continue to be a massive roadblock to the adoption rates of higher resolution displays for the foreseeable future. All right, so that's all I have to say on the topic. Let me know your thoughts and what has your upgrade path been like to getting to where you are now and if an upgrade is in the pipeline what are you considering of getting in terms of monitor are you thinking of going 4k 60 or potentially 1440p at high refresh rate and i've listed a bunch of uh, recommended monitors uh, down in the description below so check them out if you want to see what's available and, and what the prices are like uh, so yeah let's have the conversation in the comment section below i'm dimitri thanks so much for watching don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next video